Okay, everybody, we're back for another episode of The Art Bros. Um, Mike Q, and as always, Fancy Dave with me. I'm always here. And we still have our beautiful guest. It's beautiful. <laughs> Dial McGregor over here. Come He's closer. too radiant. So hear you. I'm quite gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, this week we'll be talking about uh, um, some John Millay, or John Everett Millay. Sir, John Everett Millay. He was knighted. knighted. He was knighted. He was. What and we're talking prick. about one of his. <laughs> 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 and we're talking about one of his more more uh, famous pieces, if not the highlight of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood um, uh, movement, or whatever you want to call it, Ophelia. Now, this painting right here was made in 1851 eight to 1852. It took a year to paint. It is oil on canvas, and um, it's actually at the Tate right now. Is that the tape? It's at the tape. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, what we have here is there's there's actually a conversation going on as to whether or not it's Ophelia from Hamlet dead or in the process of dying. That is true. I, I couldn't really tell uh, when I was reading the backstory on this thing if it's a moment as soon as she's about to drown herself or she has drowned. It's just I... happens to have been placed in a very serene position um, for by me, a total coincidence. Like I said. Uh, the, you, you. I, well, while I was doing some research on this, uh, I noticed that some people said she was dead, and some mm. people say she was right. She's singing right before she dies. This is the moment after she learns that her father had been had been killed. Spoilers! Uh, spoilers! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Spoilers. You're gonna have to put that in the YouTube title. Yes. Don't, don't want any uh, upset people. Ophelia. This character is from uh, Hamlet. Correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, she learned that about her father's death, and she commits suicide. So, like I said, the big conversation is, I don't know whether it's... I think, I believe, personally, she's dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that for me, the fact that she's dead in this piece makes it a lot more morbidly beautiful. Like, we're looking at the, the corpse of a, a, of a of dead, of this dead, beautiful young woman in, like, this natural, beautiful scene. Lush. So it's very, it's very contradictive to, like, what we have. We have life all around her, and she's not alive. Yes, uh, or, or is she? Or, or is oh, she oh. exactly? So um, that's not the main thing about this piece. The fact is, uh, this is actually there are a lot of oh, different Ophelias out there. There's a lot of depictions of this scene. But Popular this, subject yeah, matter, exactly. Yeah, at that time. Yeah, um, it would be like the until now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. What do you guys think about this? What do we got going on? Dial, I see those gears turning. <laughs> you yourself said you're not a big fan of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. I am a huge fan of it, so this is going to be interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I, learned about, I learned about uh, the PRB. You know, a couple, not the PBR. Couple, not, not the PBR. <laughs> not, not to be confused with everybody's favorite alcoholic beverage. I actually don't like it. So that again, it, it another, is, co- another is, contradiction well, between us. That that was definitely some sarcasm. It is some horrid, horrid beer. Yes. Um, I, I learned about this uh, two or three years ago in a modern art class, mm-hmm. and the, the the visual style, the the concepts, they they didn't really strike me. I was really more of a um, a Hudson River School kind of guy, or. Um, now, what is Hudson River School? Hudson River School. Would, would that be Turner? I'm not, oh. I'm not certain. Oh. Uh, he it's, is no. Were they that same time period? They came... I, I, may be, I may be confusing my... Turner came before. Before, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, either way, um, just a little backstory on the pre raphaelite Brotherhood. It's a group mm-hmm. of artists who came together. Um, it's British. Right, if I believe right. Yes, England? Def- definitely yeah. British. Yeah, English. Yes, yeah, sir, in a title. But. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Yeah, you've got a knight on, on the goddamn on the goddamn uh, Avengers team of painters. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> we uh, a bunch of guys got together and they decided to start this start painting about things that. Oh man, what is it specifically, um, Dal? If you remember, I think it was like. The process, they didn't want it to be as mechanical in a way. Yeah. You know, just... They wanted to focus on the beauty of nature uh, rather than what everyone was painting about. Portraiture. Portraiture and stuff like that. Uh, these people, they they rejected a lot of the things from the high renaissance. Mm. Um, uh, and we, in my opinion, we got some really amazing 
uh, photos out of it that base themselves on um, nature, on emotion, uh, romanticism, pretty much. Yeah. So again, romanticism is my favorite art movement. This is why I, I love. I do like <laughs> romanticism. I'm, yeah. I'm a big, uh, I'm a big like, Goya man. Oh yeah. Okay. I there do like go. Goya. There you go. Yeah. So then again, well, let's get back to, to Ophelia over here. Uh, no, she's not going anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> chilling there. So yeah, she's just she's thinking. Right? <laughs> Interestingly, a little trivia: um, the model that posed for this, uh, she she posed in a bathtub and for Malay, and she actually got sick. Oh, and her no. father threatened legal action. The only thing keeping her warm were candles. Yes, apparently. candles. Yeah, and then one day they went out, and so she got very sick from it. Her father threatened legal action on Malay. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, according to him, painting this was extremely torturous because he. This was a time where um, you had. They went outside to do this, which is kind yes. of like unheard of back then. Yeah. They they did it en plein air, like the impressionists did, and it was difficult because it's very yeah. difficult painting outside. Yeah, you want to keep everything authentic. Like the yeah. plants shown there are in season for that time. Exactly. Um, He's got the different flowers plants. Are in season. Yeah. Every everything comes from. Yeah, I it's read that he uh, he there were some flowers in there before that are not there anymore because he painted over them because he wanted to keep it so authentic he painted over them because those flowers were not from that area exactly. or even in that season. Apparently. Yeah, yeah, everything he painted on here was from real like a real life reference. Yes, he was he's actually looking at it, um, and uh, that's in my opinion that's beautiful. That really is. Uh, so what else we got, guys? Um, to to tack on to that. Um, I do remember these guys when they would go out into nature to do this stuff. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I don't believe this specific piece was painted in its entirety outside. But what happened was you'd go out there with a few paints um, with your, your charcoals and you would do studies of, say those white flowers right, you'd right. figure out what they would look like and how how to render them and then you would go back into the studio where you could you know have your big canvas and mix all the paints yeah. and stuff I remember correctly that's that sounds like a very lot when yes. i was researching how they did that uh, so for me what i take from this piece is I really, I really, as, as morbid as it sounds, I really hope she's dead in this piece because the, 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 just the contrast of having this, this dead, beautiful woman among this beautiful, natural scene, that's what really draws me to this piece and that's why it makes it one of my most favorite paintings. Um, it's just, it's like such a morbid concept. Yeah. Uh, so about the framing kind of, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but, um. Well, since it's, his character comes from a play, right? Yes. And the scene is a famous scene where she's committed suicide after going mad. Yes. It, it kind of seems like the curtains from a stage, you know? Kinda oh, opening snap. It up. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I hope you can find a piece that does that. I think they all do. You think? Well, hope you find one for the YouTube video. Gustav's. Um, no. I'm sorry. Yes, Gustav Corbett. Mm-hmm. Corbett. He would... He would do a very similar thing at the unveilings of... Uh, oh, he actually had like a curtain? He had a curtain that he would open up. <laughs> I, I believe that's Corbet. That could be... That could be another artist, but that I... That sounds like Corbet. Hmm? That sounds like Corbet. So he's yeah. definitely one for grandeur, that's for sure. Yes, it's all about Corbet. presentation, man. It's all about making an entrance, sir. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have cur curtains with that with me now. <laughs> We're trying to walk into a room. Pull the curtain. <laughs> Here I am. Brilliant. Yes. So, uh, just final closing thoughts, guys. What do we think about this? Like I said, this is actually one of my most favorite paintings. Um, this is the painting that actually pulled me into the whole pre raphaelite Brotherhood thing. Wow. Yeah. Because this is a big piece for you. Unfo yeah, unfortunately so. It is. A, it is. A, I'm really. A, I'm kind of biased. When I don't, 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 don't say that. That's so, what we can take from it is... Uh, this was done open air studies, right? To get the yes. to get the background, right? Yeah, look at the lighting too. It's just so well done. Yeah, she used the model to get the certain things more portrayed mm -hmm. more realistically, like the uh, dress being wet. Yes. And pre rap Well, how do you pronounce it? Pre Raphael, like Raphael. Raphael. It's before Raphael, pretty okay. much. That's where they get the name from. Pre Raphael. Now, does that refer to the Raphael from the Renaissance? Yes, of, of course, Raphael from the Renaissance, but. 
they were looking at the Renaissance masters before Raphael came along. They refers to the fact that they say once Raphael came on the scene, mm. anything after that sucked. Well, <laughs> well I not mean, sucked, but like that's when they they started seeing. It yeah, but wondering about the cut. titling about yes. that a specific subgroup of artists. Like why? The- <laughs> Why pre-Raphael? Because they wanted to emulate the artists that came before Raphael. Okay. That's pretty much what they, they think they could, like I said, just now they consider everything after Raphael kind of cookie cutter. Mm. And they wanted to get back to basics. Even though they're centuries after Raphael. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you see you see the irony there, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, so it is that in, them, name. in themselves, they are not pre-Raphaelites, even though they're called that. They are they, uh, they come after Raphael. They're they're time traveling artists. They are, that's they that's are, what yeah. they are. They they're way ahead they're of their actually, time. I'm pretty sure Marty McFly was a pre-Raphaelite. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'm re- maybe read that, wrong. That, that's in the uh, deleted scenes of Back to the Future. That is, that is, yes. Okay, guys, so, um, yeah, oh, so we're kind of running out of time here, but uh, thanks again, Dial. We loved having you on here. We can hope we hope we have you on some more. It's a pleasure. This is actually our 20th episode. 20. Yeah, so thanks so Big much. Big two yes. Yes. Yeah. episode. Our yes. bros can finally drink. You know, the YouTube channel itself will take life. Yes. Go to we'll a be bar 21. and drink a beer. <laughs> thanks, man. All right, guys, so thanks a lot for everybody who's been following us. We really appreciate it. And Dial, thanks so much. Our bros out. Our bros out. See you guys next time.